Welcome back to the show. It is uh, 634 this morning with the bearded Danny Ratliff. Hey, man. I trimmed. I know. You know, back in 1890, men that wore beards would be like, I'm going to go kill that bear with my bare hands. Hey, you don't know what I do in my off time. Yeah, it's more like, is that hand cream organic? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) Sound like my wife. (laughs) You know, it's interesting. I, uh, over the uh, the weekend, my wife and I uh, um, didn't have any kids, so we watched the movie Midway. Oh, really? Right. Yeah. Um, which is the, it's the true story mm-hmm. about the Battle of Midway. Very well done. It got panned at the at the theaters. The critics hated it, I guess, because we were attacking people or whatever. Well, what's um, the age group of the critics? Uh, yeah, uh, four. You know, they don't know. Um, <laughs> but uh, and it's just probably uh, oh, you know, they they made the Japanese look bad. Um, <laughs> Japan, just by the way, Japan killed a quarter million Chinese people looking for the Doolittle Flyers. Okay, just yeah. Okay, just to keep that, because when when Doolittle bombed Japan and Tokyo, they then landed in free China. Japan killed 250,000 Chinese looking for the Doolittle Raiders. So, you know, I'm not saying they had it coming to them, but there you go. Um, But that's why they didn't like it. That's that's the thing. But here's the thing about, about Midway. And we were watching this movie, and it's interesting because... I looked at my wife halfway through the movie and, and you know, the stuff that they were going through you know, during the Battle of Midway and, and, and the things that they did, um, you know, attacking the Japanese fleet and, and fighting back over Midway. I go, we will never win a war again. Not like that. I mean, because these, these were, this is when men were men, right? They call them the American, they call them the greatest generation for a reason. I mean, these were some, <laughs> these are some fearless guys. But anyway, if you get a chance, watch the movie. It, it really is well done. It's got a great cast and um, you, you'll enjoy it. So anyway, it's a byline to that. But I was talking about men with beards. Man, those, those manly were, men. Yeah, those were manly men. They, you earn the right to wear a beard. <laughs> <laughs> if you were in World War II. You know, that's a different, that, you know, that's another story that people forget, right? We, we talk about the 50s and the 60s and, and how this greatest generation, you know, why they were the greatest generation. And what people forget is, is that there was a, a confluence of events that occurred in the 1950s and 60s that we will likely never have again um, in the U.S. economy. And what people forget is, is that in the 1940s during World War II, all the men were fighting in the battles, right? We were in Europe, we were in Africa, we were, you know, fighting Japan. Um, the men, basically, if if you were a, an able-bodied male, you were probably overseas fighting the war. So, what did the women do? They went to work in the factories, right? So they were producing jeeps and planes and and doing all these things. And you also couldn't buy anything, right? Everything was rationed. You want cheese, tires, clothes? It was all rationed because everything was going to the war effort. So what did that create? It created this massive pinup demand for goods. So then Johnny comes home after the war, right? And what did they do? <laughs> they hadn't seen each other in a while. Nine months later, lots of little feet hit the ground. Right, they were also buying homes, building houses, going back to work. The women came home; they were raising families. Now, uh, that was you know basically requiring you know consumption of goods and services to raise those children. The men went back to the factories; they're working, and we're now the manufacturing epicenter of the entire world. Why we we drop nuclear bombs on Japan? We you know the majority of of the Euro, of Europe, whether it was Germany or Italy or, or or the UK, they were completely bombed out because of the of the war. So we were basically the manufacturing epicenter of the world. We were rebuilding all these countries. So now we've got everybody in the country employed manufacturing, which has the highest economic multiplier versus services because of of everything it requires to manufacture good products or service. And so you've got this highly group of you've got this group of highly disciplined men that have been in the mil- serving in the military, working, producing, manufacturing. You got women at home, raising families, building homes, creating communities. You know that's why you had this massive economic expansion in the fifties and the sixties. And of course, then you had the space race, and we had a lot of other things that were going on along with that. But, you know, people look back at the baby boomers and this, and this greatest generation and go, bah, 
<laughs> you know, they're not, there's nothing special about them. That was a very unique 20, 30 year period in the U.S. economy that will never exist again unless we have a similar type of event that creates that same type of, of, of underpinning. But it's, it's, you know, this is one of the problems when we start looking and talking about economic growth and we've got politicians going, well, I'm going to create economic growth by spending more in debt. We didn't have any debt or deficit back in the 50s or 60s, ladies and gentlemen. The average debt to income ratio in the 1950s and 60s was about 30 percent of debt to, to the global household net worth. Right. All they had was basically a very small mortgage. Most most everything was paid for in cash. There was no credit cards. There was no running down to the bank and getting a payday loan. Didn't exist. In fact, it was almost kind of a, a pariah if you actually were, were in debt. I mean, people are like, well, you're in debt, but don't want anything to do with you. We changed all that in the 80s, right? In the 80s, we deregulated banks, and all of a sudden, banks can issue everybody a credit card that can, can breathe. And in fact, if you don't have enough credit, we'll give you more credit. And then we established a credit score based on how much credit you take out. And we wonder why people are in debt up to their eyeballs and can't make ends meet. This is why you can't create economic growth. And this is why, regardless of what politicians tell you, it's like, oh, like me as president, and I'm going to pay for everything, and we're going to have free college and free health care, and we're going to create 12% economic growth. Ain't going to happen. You're going to be lucky to be growing at one or two. And if you want a quick example of a country that has done exactly what Bernie Sanders and the others are proposing, go look at Japan. 1% economic growth, actually in a recession now, 1% economic growth, zero negative interest rates, and basically an entire population that's struggling to make ends meet. Not the way you want to be in the U.S. Anyway, sorry, byline. Go we'll watch the movie Midway. No, that was, that was the whole point of that. But, but think about it. You make a very interesting point. Think about how far the pendulum has swung at this stage because mm-hmm. you have a, a whole group, a whole generation who's never experienced anything like this. So think, think about this and put this in perspective. Have you ever met anybody from that era who complained? Ever. My dad complained about everything. Well, that's probably he had you. <laughs> of course he did. He had to yell at you all day long. I mean, but, but think about if that. If I had Both a nickel guys. for every time we left that door open, I'd be a rich man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. But, yeah. but if you think about that, I mean, these guys, they saw the worst. And so everything was great. Life was good here. Now you have a whole generation who thinks that, you know, oh, what was me? Uh, mm. I don't get a participation trophy for showing up to work. Can, can, I just have a question. Can you imagine what would have happened if Al Gore was sent back in history to like 1950 and he started talking about climate change? <laughs> he probably would have been beaten in the street somewhere. Put in a straitjacket. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know, the thing about the greatest generation, they were preconditioned to be able to do what they did because they survived the Depression. They yeah. knew how to deal with want and scarcity and shortages. Mm-hmm. And so to sacrifice things for the better good and to do what they did during the war, it came naturally to them. Yeah. No, it's very true. It's, and like I said, it's, it's, it's you know, if, we, and we've interviewed, you know, on oh, our radio yeah. show, we've interviewed people that have been in the war and, and have, have gone through that. And it's an, it's, an, it's an amazing group of people. And, and really, it's a shame, you know, the last new little raider died. Lieutenant Cole died, died two years ago. Two years ago, yeah. yeah just, just recently, like 103. I, like I got to interview that guy. He was amazing. Yeah, and but you know the things these the, the guys the things these guys went through and the things they saw. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine Bernie Sanders running for president in the 1950s and promoting socialism after these guys just came back from fighting against the rise of communism and socialism? Well, the great McCarthyism yeah. machine would have sucked him up like a piece of dust. <laughs> yeah, he would have been in prison. <laughs> but, you know, this is the point is that we have forgotten kind of our roots. And, you know, when you start thinking about where you have an entire group of individuals now cheering and chanting and, and, and potentially voting for socialism over capitalism, you know, how far has that pendulum now swung from the greatest generation to potentially the worst. Be right back after the break. Catch the best of The Real Investment Show anytime, anywhere from Stitcher Smart Radio. Download podcasts of The Real Investment Show from Stitcher.com.